All right, so let's have a look at the two materials you're seeing now on screen and how their diffuse maps are made. So let's start with the first one. As you can see, there aren't too many nodes used to get the following albedo map and actually the techniques are quite easy. All right, so first of all, let's have a look at the base where it all starts. In this case, it will be the sand since the rocks are on top of the sand, so to say, even though in real life it's the sand on top of the rocks, but <laughs> you get the idea. So one question and one technique I want to start with is normal to curvature smooth. So what happens is, let's say we have these two nodes right here. Normally you will grab the height map. In this case I chose for the roughness map I made here to get a bit more information already at the start. And instead of just plugging in the height map into the gradient map straight away, you first run through a normal to extract some little small details and noise. Then the curve is smooth, and with this grayscale information, we then run it through a gray map. And with that, we capture a lot more detail and, in my opinion, a lot more control as well. And especially in realistic materials, this is really useful. As you can see, here is just one solid core. While with the curve is smooth, we capture all these nice little waves and details and noise in there as well. Which, as you can see, gives us a much better base and a lot more detail in there as well with just one node. Also from sand, since sand is pretty much small little rocks all combined, I just quickly grab these dirt nodes right here, blend them together, use a gradient map and just put it on top to get in this tiny bit of noise that you can see right there. Making it look a lot more realistic. You can also do this in the roughness map to create different roughness values which boosts the realism even more. And then by inferring the height, as you can see, normally the sand is the darkest part. We just mask out where the sand can be, or in this case, the grain. So all the way over here is where we are merging the rocks with the sand. But let's have a look at the rocks first. So this is where we begin, already quite a bit of information there. Another technique I would recommend when making diffuse maps especially realistic ones is to extract normal is to extract information from the roughness map since in the roughness as you can see right here you already tried to get a lot of detail in by blending AO nodes together mostly from the AO map and then just pouring it through filters slow blur gray scales and other bits and throughout the AO net for example is Edge detect, which adds a lot of tiny details right over there. And as you can see, there's already a lot of detail information in here, so we can just reuse that in our diffuse map. So what I would recommend after you made your hide is just get into the roughness values. So we can use that information we're making here into our diffuse map. So for the rocks, I want a more solid base. And since there are small cavities in the rocks as well, we want some sand in between there. So for that same technique as we used here with the sand, we just sample a height map through a normal map, use a curve to smooth, and then use a gradient map as you always do. And the thing, and all you have to do from there is stack these together. But of course, we don't want this color over here on top of our rock map or you only want it in the cavities so what you want to do is just make a mask that filters it out and in this case again this is where the roughness map comes in perfectly since we already have those little cavities in place there and all the small details we just extract some information from there Alright, so the rocks are quite simple at the base, so what I do is I grab a gradient map. And a good tip as well is to sample from the roughness map, since often with realistic materials you want quite a bit of detail in your roughness map as well. This is of course rocks and sand and all the materials are affected differently in different parts due to, I don't know, weathering, material usage and so on. So I already have a lot of detail here in these maps, as you can see, it's already quite a bit going on over here. So why not reuse that information 
in our coloring phase. So what we do, we just grab our height or one of the stages in our roughness. And we start with a solid base color for our rocks. Now, to mask this part out straight away, what we just do is set the alpha value over here to zero. And if it shows up like this for you, just hit the little box right here and then it shows alpha values. We use the same technique as above for the sand in the cavities. So we just grab our height map, pull it through a normal, curvature smooth, and then a gradient map with the same principle of masking them out by just setting the alpha to zero. One thing you want to be aware of, however, is the color and the alpha still matters, even though it's set to zero. As you can see, once I set it to yellow, it will change in the map. And with all that said and done, we just blend the two together with a max light in and you're pretty much set. Now you can see I use a mask here, but if I remove it, the following effect will happen, which is a bit too much. It pretty much highlights all the edges, which I don't want. So to combat that, I just made a mask pretty much sampling where the color can be and where it can't be. And again, I just control the levels by using blur, levels and histogram just to pinpoint the sweet spot on where I want the scores to show up or where I don't want them to show up. Again, extracting information from the roughness phase. Once that's in place, we want to give color to these little pebbles as well. So again, just straightforward using a gradient map and that's it since they are quite a minor detail and we will use more techniques to give them more detail later on. One question you might be wondering is how I extract the information only the pebbles are being colored. So to go over that quickly and how they are made, I just use a cell node, use an edge detect, into a slope blur grayscale to add some deformation and detail, a non-uniform blur grayscale with itself to blur out these nasty artifacts and hard edges. Then this here is pretty much to mask out a bit randomly where I want them to be or not. So just crunch map, blur it, use a histogram to get a pure white and black value. And then use a multi-directional warp to get some mid-tones as well. Pour it in the blend and use an add sub with uh, just play around with your opacity, whatever suits your needs. As you can see right here, it pretty much controls where I want them or where I don't want them in a more randomized manner. Just Then I just adjust the contrast a little bit and blend them together with the rock height map to get the following result. So now they will only be scattered in the lower parts, aka where the sand is going to be. And just to make the edges here a bit smoother, I use a non-uniform blur grayscale. Well, I reckon you can also use a blur by itself. Slow blur to add a bit more deformation. And now we got our rocks, pebbles with some different height information in there as well. And that's what I use to sample these colors as well. And with the sliders here, we can just say where we want the color to be and where we don't want it to be. Also, a neat thing with this is that these parts over here will be more blended in with the sand, which is uh, exactly what we want. So here, having the base for our larger rocks and the pebbles, we just blend together with the sand right here to get the following result. And then blend some additional pebbles as well that we couldn't capture or to get more control on if we, for example, want some different colors. So let's say we add over here and we want some more orange looking pebbles as well. We can easily just do that. Or to add pebbles with moss. I don't know, this looks more like a radioactive pebble, but I'm sure. We then add some detail to the overall rocks and these detailless pebbles by doing the following. So to create that, it's quite simple. We just use an edge detect on one of the high maps right here. I just picked out randomly or by trying different ones from the high map stage. We just use an edge detect and what I was looking for is to get these 
lines. See a lot of detail, lots of speckles, lots of noise, but mostly these bigger shapes you can see running right here. Then blur them out a little bit to get rid of the harsh noise, these bl pure black and white pixels a bit more. Run them through a normal map. Curve to smooth. And then just a grading map with different alpha values to play around with. And then we just blend them into our rocks as we can see right here. And now for the mask, quite simple, it's just a grunge map I used earlier, which I just showed for the pebbles. Blend it with the mask right here, we used to control for the rocks. And there we go, we got some more detail in there. And now we're already coming to the last stages and this is where the real magic happens. So I want to add some smudges of a darker color on top, which is done right here. That especially works well on this part of the rock here, I would say, as you can see. It looks quite natural, more and more weathered as well. So I'll use a crunch map right here, transform, make it tile node so it tiles. Don't mind this weird square here since you're not going to notice it in the diffuse. So. It's gonna blend it with a mask I made earlier over here, which is some erosion lines you see here in the rocks. And I made this by using an anisotropic noise, yes. Rotating it, making a tile. Again, don't mind this over here, because we're going to warp the shit out of it anyway. With the noise input, just the rock formation itself, so it follows the base shapes the rocks we have over here in our height map. A slow blur grayscale with again the same height. And then we just mix it with a pearly noise to get some more height information or random height information over there. And we use that in combination with the mask over here. So we have a shit ton of detailing and information going on now, which we just pour into our gradient map. And then we get all these nice little smudges, these little lines right here, and little noises. And it's using a HSL map to control the different hue, saturation, and lightness. And then we just blend it together. It also affects the sand a little bit, which I personally quite like. Add some more discoloration in there too. And then we can use an HSL map again if we want to change any of these for the overall rocks. And here's the big moment I would say. So we have our rocks, we have our sand, and all we do then is just blend it together by using a copy and opacity to change the height of the sand if you want to. And boom, there you go. So quite detailed already. Now let's do a little extra push to get some more eroding lines or where the water has been in the sand. Since we have the going in a high map, as you can see right over here, but it doesn't really show up in the diffuse. And it's actually extremely easy to do. As you can see here, the difference is quite big. So we have our almost finished diffuse over here. And if I click here, there you go. Some really nice eroding lines in there, which follow the exact shapes almost. And also creating these nice little benches or whatever they're called right here. I really like it and it's again really, it's again really fucking simple. We just go over to our erosion lines again. Same drill, you know how this works. But instead of picking this one, we're gonna use a slow blur grayscale output. And with that, we just throw it into a gradient. We don't even change the color of it. And all it does, since we're using grayscale, is just make certain parts more dark. And since we're using adds up, it pretty much uses the colors underneath. And again, by using a mask we made earlier, right there, for our pebbles, with a contrast node, we can just specify where the lines and erosion has to be. And by doing this, it will also affect these little cavities right here in between the rocks. 
So we've got some nice information going on in our sand, different highlights, darker parts, erosion, flow, and the rocks have quite a bit of detailing going on as well. Then to finish it off, since some of the areas are quite extreme in how dark they are and how much they form a silhouette or enforce a silhouette of a rock around it, I'm just gonna filter that out and that's easily done by again using a mask we made earlier. This one right here. And occlusion and getting a nice gradient for the sand in there. Again, not full as you can see. The alpha is switched on halfway and then just blending these together. And then for the opacity, as you can see, we can control how much erosion we want in our material. So let's go over the main points and tips and tricks used here. So again, for a realistic base or a base with lots of details, you want to use your height map through a normal map Curvature smooth and then sample it in a gradient map. And as you can see, the differences are phenomenal. As you can see, it forms a solid base. Another important part is the roughness map. It plays, in my opinion, quite a huge role on the albedo or diffuse. Since for realistic materials, especially, you'll be making quite a bit of detail in there since materials are composed of different materials on its own or affected by weathering exposure and so on which create different roughness values and since you're already building up a lot of detail in here why not reuse it i think that's the biggest takeaway in general reuse as much as possible you already made like these erosion lines before why not reuse them to add them into your diffuse this way you're saving time notes and as long as it doesn't affect one or the other, it's completely fine. And the real important thing is that you want to stack your colors. So make a base first and think, how am I going to do this? So the sand is on top of the rocks, but in this case, you want to do the sand first and then put the color of the rocks on top. So even though it works a bit different in real life, you want to think from, so to say, color perspective. So the sand first, since it's the first down, and then start your working your way up. Pretty much look at your eye map and think, all right, what are the darkest values? What's all the way on the bottom of the material? And what are the white values? And what's all the way on top of the material? I would almost say the hardest part of coloring is the masking, getting the exact shapes that you want extracted while keeping everything flexible and easy to edit for yourself or in production with different sliders and exposed parameters. But just as opinions, one isn't good enough, you always want multiple ones to see them working together or to see what works best for you. So let's look at another example, just to see what techniques are used and what is repeated. So again, with the cobblestone right here, one thing we can see straight away is using the hide information into a normal map, setting the intensity quite high and then putting it to our curve to smooth to get this, ni this nice contrast right here. To get this nice contrast right here while still capturing all these little cracks and details in the cobblestone. And by using a flood fill, directional warp with the same intensity as used before, otherwise it wouldn't fit perfectly. And the histogram scan to mask out certain cobblestones we get two colors right there and as you can see there's already a nice detail building up right there on the base as i said you want to stack your materials work from the darkest color all the way to the bottom to the lightest color all the way on top then to, e then to add even more color into the scene otherwise this looks a bit boring this looks already a bit more interesting color wise just want to use some random colors right here so what i did is use uh, grunge we used early over here so pretty much cloud steel histogram the shit out of it and then sharpen it to get so the sharpen it to get these lines going right there and you just slow blur grayscale with the high map blurred gradient for the color sharpen it again 
and then the HSL node if I want to change the color lightness or saturation and blend it on top. And due to that, as you can see, we get these nice lines going here, a bit of detail over there. I'm already making a good base. I'm not going to talk too much about this part, it's just adding pretty much the same principle on top again. And this is done by just grabbing the height, putting it in the slope and grayscale, cranking up the intensity quite a bit so we get all these little details, cracks and whatever going. Like in a high map it wouldn't work, but in a gradient map as you can see it works wonders. This you stay, it will maintain the big shape. These smaller shapes right here are medium shapes and a bit of noise as well to finish it off and you can even get rid of the noise if you want to by masking it out. And with that it brings some nice detail in there. Then another detail pass, same principle, we just grab a navy and occlusion map with quite high values so we get these nice AO in the little small areas over there and so we're gonna mask out these pure black areas anyway. And we can already mask it out by simply using a gradient map and send the A and send the A of alpha to zero. And by doing so we get really get some nice details in. And already it's going to, it's starting to look quite complete. Some more dirt spots as well. Again, same principle as this one and this one. Blending it on top and using a random grunge map to mask out certain areas. And now to enforce the line work in the stones or the erosion, as you can see right here, we just use a gradient with again a direction slope built up from anisotropic noise. The high map of our cobblestone, direction warp, slow blur bray scale. Again, the exact same way I did it with the sandy rocks. And we just put in a gradient map use, utilizing the alpha channels and blending it together. And to add some highlight on the edges and top of the rocks, we just grab the information from the curve to smooth by using a histogram scan to extract the tops giving it a color and blending it on top and just soften out these bits in between the rocks a bit more I again grab the curve just move assign the colors and blend it on top and that's the auto diffuse map again very simple techniques but very efficient techniques that give quick results and good results so if you want to know how these materials are made from scratch, from start to finish, making the height, roughness, normal and so on, or you want to complete, put together a render scene for your materials or a startup template, you can buy my products on my art station or here on my Gumroad with more products coming soon. And with that all said, see you next time.